Hello, hello, hello. Today is Saturday, March 30, 2024. Let me check that. Yes, <laughs> that is correct. Here follow Keith Norman's video solutions to problem 196 the integrated circuit. Tomorrow I will publish Eugen's solutions to the same problem. Remember when I posted the problem I said I feared that there would only be three correct solutions. Well I was close. Ulf Heller's solution is perfect, 100% correct. Eugen and Keith have looked at all your solutions and we together have decided which of your solutions would be still worth mentioning even though they may not be 100% correct. And that is B Park 10001. Yes, certainly worth mentioning. We looked closely at Greenman's solution and we decided that's not even close. So he is not one of the winners, although I expected he might become one. It was a difficult problem, an integrated circuit, and what made it perhaps more difficult is that you cannot draw pictures in your solutions. However, we worded it in such a way that you could describe the solutions. And many of you tried that. Of course, in key solutions, it's a video, so he can make pictures. An organ solution, which he sent to me, has drawings in it, so he also has pictures. Are you ready? So here comes Keith's video solution. It's always nice to have a video solution because then I have to do practically no work. This is Keith's solution to Walter Lewin's problem 196 and it concerns an inductor and a resistor uh, acting as, a, as an integrator in the mathematical sense so that if we have some function of v in here the integral of the v in is presented at v out uh, within certain restrictions which we'll come on to later we need to know about faraday's law walter lewin 802 lecture 16 uh, and also the definition of uh, inductance self-inductance uh, again uh, 802 lecture 20. so let's apply faraday around this loop uh, there is some d phi by dt changing uh, around here due to the self-inductance uh, and we have an integral e dot dl to perform so what we do um, let's I, I will pick this point i go around the loop now here i have a minus v in i have nothing through the inductor, no E field, remember, we're only doing the E fields, this side, and then I have an IR down here. So there we go, and that gives us that side. The other side, the D5 by DT, we get here. And so that is what I would expect to see if you apply Faraday to this circuit. Not that you've pulled everything across to one side, uh, as a lot of people like to do. We do that next, though, when we're dealing with the maths. That is the physics, and from here on, we're dealing with the maths. Uh, we're given a hint 
to, to solve this uh, equation of to, to multiply uh, both sides by uh, this uh, what's called an integrating factor. So uh, if I take this expression here, do that, um, what I also do um, from here, I divide by r because it then leaves me with this expression on the right hand side and for me it's just easier to see that actually that whole expression is just the, d the derivative with respect to time of that there. So, okay, moving on. I can then integrate both sides of our previous equation which gives me this on the left hand side and of course um, being slightly naughty uh, I simply say that the, the, the one over the d over dt and the d cancel so effectively I get that on the right hand side but we also know that i equals v out over r so I get this expression here which if I rearrange a little bit I get that there Okay, and for large, uh, L over R, with respect to T, uh, this term is approximately 1, so I can then say, uh, to explain how it integrates, I get V out is approximately R over L, integral of V in uh, d dt. Um, now, what does that look like in practice? If I've got V out against time, let's imagine I've got some L over R uh, time constant out here, what it means is if I've got an in, a varying signal, you know, it's moved a little bit, I've got a bit of V out, and then in our case it'll be a sawtooth waveform, which I shall come on to in a moment. Um, if I was to work closer to the L over R time constant, what I would find is I'd be getting this curve, and then a curve down, uh, curve up, curve down. But if I, if I stay close to, to uh, uh, zero away from the L over R time constant, then I'm virtually on a straight line. Okay, so that's what we do. I've got uh, my varying input voltage doing that, and the output voltage, as I've previously explained, will rise to some maximum and come down and like that. Okay, uh, as I've explained here. We have a positive half cycle, we reach a maximum uh, of, of that, and then we have a negative half cycle. Uh, okay, if I had to describe this in words, which is what you will have to do, uh, here is the description. Uh, I don't think it needs to be terribly complicated, uh, that pretty much describes what's going on. And that is my solution, thank you.